Every year, individuals across the United States lose lambs and goat kids due to hypothermia and starvation. Now, if you read up on this or go on online forums, some individuals might lead you to believe that rectifying this problem is rather simple. Unfortunately, it is not. This is a complex problem that has to be addressed in a very specific way. Today, we are going to show you a specific intervention to deal with down lambs and goat kids specifically from hypothermia or starvation and we're going to talk to you about the specific way you go about doing this stay tuned to find out more Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lanessa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us today. So as I mentioned before, every year we get individuals that call us and say, I had a down lamb or I had a down goat kid and I rewarmed them and I tried to give them food and I did this and I did that and they ended up dying or they ended up having a seizure. What in the world is going on here? So as we do here on Lanasa Farms, we are going to explain this to you. So you are not only going to know how to deal with this, but you're also going to understand why this happens. Let's start from the beginning. When a baby lamb or a goat kid is born, they have to have enough energy on board to allow them to nurse from mom. Now this energy is provided through two specific ways and the first one is brown fat. So what in the world is brown fat? Well, brown fat is a special kind of fat. This fat provides the energy that that baby needs in order to get going and to nurse from mom. This brown fat is very rich in what we call mitochondria and you don't need to know what mitochondria are specifically, but just know they are are the powerhouse of all of the cells in your body. And this brown fat and these mitochondria create heat. This is a non-shivering heat. This is a heat that is just formed and keeps the body temperature warm and where it needs to be until the animal can get the feed and the colostrum that it needs. Different babies are born with different amounts of brown fat. Some are born with a lot, some are born with a little. There's a lot of things that go into how much brown fat a baby is born with. This can be temperature, this can be the breed of the animal, this can be the nutrition that the animal gets. We're not going to get into that in this video, but just know that brown fat is very, very important. The second thing that these babies utilize for energy is blood glucose. And a lot of you have heard of blood glucose through your life or through an individual that you may know that may have some kind of problems with their blood sugar. This can be high, this can be too low. In this case, these babies are using this blood sugar for things like brain function, muscle function, different functions throughout the body, again, to keep them healthy enough that they can nurse and that they can get the energy that they need from mom. Unfortunately, as you know, things happen. Babies might be born, as we had happened to us recently, in very, very cold temperatures. Here recently, we had temperatures that were 20 below zero. That baby is using a ton of energy trying to maintain its body temperature long enough that it can nurse off of mom and get going. Sometimes this just doesn't happen. Other times the baby may not be born with enough brown fat to give them that energy to last them long enough. They may not have a high enough blood sugar level. There's lots and lots of things that can happen. You can have debilitating problems with the baby where they simply can't get up and walk. So what happens? Well, if this baby can't get food fast enough off of mom, we enter into a downward spiral that eventually leads to death. It starts off with we have our stressor. The stressor can be extreme cold temperatures. The stressor in some cases can even be extreme hot temperatures. This stressor can be because there's been some damage to the baby, but we have an underlying stressor that's keeping them from doing what it is that they need to do. The next thing that happens is that brown fat is used up. All that energy is used up and then the body goes into using what's left of that blood sugar, that glucose. That is used up and the baby goes down. The baby can no longer maintain its body temperature and generally will become 
hypothermic. That's just a fancy way of saying the body temperature is below what it should be. Once the baby is in hypothermia for long enough, it will eventually slip into a coma. And once that baby's in a coma, it will eventually die. Now, unfortunately, a lot of the times when you find your down lamb or you find your down goat kid, they are already either in a coma or they're just before going into the coma. They are completely down. They're completely out. They're most of the time either completely unresponsive or almost unresponsive. This is reality. You know, if you catch them early enough and you see them shivering and you see there's problems, there's lots and lots of interventions that you can get into. But we want to talk about the bad stuff. What happens when you find them and they're completely down and out? Well, they are completely down and out because the body is trying to conserve what little energy it has left to keep that baby alive. So the heart slows way down. The respirations slow way down. The blood flow to the extremities is almost non-existent. The body starts shunting all of that blood flow to the main body cavity so we can keep heart and lungs and things like that going. The brain is functioning on a very, very basic level. It's not doing anything like trying to support eyesight, trying to support shivering, trying to support vocalization, any of that. The body is strictly in survival mode mode. So what would you do if you found an animal that was down and in this situation? You'd probably bring it in and immediately start warming it up because that's what makes sense. The baby's cold, the baby's down and out. I'm going to bring it in and I'm going to start warming it up. A lot of times this can lead to death. And here's the reason why. That baby's blood sugar is so low that you're not seeing the signs and symptoms of it outwardly right now. But when you bring that baby in and you start warming them back up, then what is going to happen is those body systems are going to start to try to function again. And when they start to try to function again, that baby is going to have seizure activity and it's probably going to die. So what can we do? What can we do to bridge this gap? And what we can do to bridge this gap is to do basically the opposite of what caused it to happen. Now, we can't add brown fat into their system, but we can give them supplemental nutrition. So what we're going to do is we want to remove them from the stressor. If they're in the cold, we want to remove them from the cold. If they're in a very, very hot environment, we want to remove them from that very, very hot environment. Whatever it is that the stressor is, we want to remove it. The next thing, the very next thing we want to do is we need to get that blood sugar back to the level that it needs to be. And that's the advanced technique that we are going to discuss today specifically is how to give them an injection. It's going to go in their abdomen, how we're going to give them this injection in their abdomen to get their blood sugar back up where it needs to be. Once we give them this injection, then we're going to warm them up. After we warm them up, they regain consciousness and they regain functionality. We are going to feed them. Most of the time when you do this, that individual animal will be able to take a bottle. Almost every time they're going to be able to take a bottle and you can give them colostrum. If they regain consciousness and they're still not with it enough or if they have a problem to where they can't utilize the bottle, then you can tube feed them. And then we're just going to monitor them and we're going to do what we need to do to continue giving them what they need until they're either ready to go back out with mom or we decide that we're going to make them a bottle baby so on and so forth. But the big question today is, okay, tell me about the shot and how do I administer the shot? So I'm going to explain to you how to give the shot here in the office, and then I'm going to take you outside to the shop where I have a actual bottle baby, and I am going to show you how I would give the injection. Now, I'm not actually going to give the injection to this animal because it doesn't need it, and I don't want to risk the chance of possibly giving him an infection, but I am going to walk you through step by step what it is that you need to do. So there's a handful of items that you need to find. So the first thing that I want you to get is a 10 milliliter syringe. The second thing I want you to get is a one inch 18 gauge needle. The third thing I want you to get is iodine or chlorhexidine to clean off the injection site. The fourth thing I want you to get is Dextrose 50. Dextrose 50 can be purchased online through Amazon. It can be purchased at Tractor Supply, Rural King, your local farm store, wherever. It is sold over the counter. And the fifth thing that I need you to get is either normal saline. This is going to be 0.09% sodium chloride for injection 
or you're going to need to boil some water. So simply what we are going to end up doing is we are going to take our dextrose 50 and we are going to mix it in a ratio of one part to one part of our dextrose 50 with our normal saline or our boiled water. We are going to clean off the animal's abdomen and we are going to give them an injection in their abdomen. We are injecting into what is known as the peritoneal cavity or the peritoneal space. This is a space that is between the outside wall of the abdomen and the insides of the abdomen where things like the intestines are located. There's actually a little space in there and we call this the peritoneal space. So you're going to have to give this shot in a very specific specific place. You need to hold the animal up, find the umbilicus where the umbilical cord was. We're going to go down one inch and then either over to the right or over to the left one half of an inch. We're going to inject our needle at a 45 degree angle. We are going to aim directly for the tail and we are going to slowly inject. And this peritoneal cavity is very, very special. It's very blood rich and it is very easily absorbed into the animal's body from this space. So by injecting this dextrose solution into that space, that sugar is going to be very, very quickly absorbed into the animal's body and it is going to give them enough blood sugar to keep them going, avoid seizure activity, and get them healthy enough that we can bottle feed them and get them back where they need to be. Now, I know that sounds very complicated, so let's take a moment to head out to the shop really quick. We'll take a look at it, and we'll go from there. If you haven't checked out our website, make sure you do www.lanessafarms.com. We have our online store there, as well as free downloadable information that you will most definitely find handy. If you have questions or concerns, hop on over to Facebook and search for us on Facebook. Our group is Lanessa Farms Tack Box. That is our online forum where we will answer any questions that you may have and you can converse with other individuals across the world that raise sheep and goats as well. So I've got a couple supplies here that you're going to need to have. I've got my Dextrose 50. You can pick this up at Tractor Supply. You can pick this up online. I know they sell it on Amazon. And then I have 10 milliliters of normal saline that is 0.9% sodium chloride solution. You can also either buy the pre-filled syringes online or you can also pick this up on Amazon in a 30 milliliter bottle. All of the links will be below. So what I actually do is I'm actually gonna waste five milliliters of this and get that out of there. That way I've got five milliliters of room left. Now some online sources that you'll see will advise a one third D50 and two thirds sodium chloride mix. This is the way that I've been doing it. It's worked well for me. You can do that or you can do my method. So I have an 18 gauge one inch needle here. I'm gonna go ahead and screw on the top and now I am ready to utilize my D50. I'm going to scrub the top of my D50, make sure that it's clean and give it a good swirl. And now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna draw up five milliliters of my D50. That way I get a one half normal saline and a one half D50. Basically I'm diluting the D50 is what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna go ahead, my bottle's a little wet for me bringing it up. Nice and slow, and I'm gonna draw up just over 10 mLs. Give it a good shake. If you are going to recap, which I don't advise if you're not used to handling these, you need to recap slowly. Avoid hitting the needle tip on the plastic. You're gonna dull it up and especially avoid sticking the needle into your finger. So now that I have this solution in hand, I am ready to treat my animal. So I'm going to get a baby just to show you where, how to prep them and where to give the injection. But because the baby isn't actually sick today, I'm not going to actually give the injection. So I'm gonna grab a lamb, I'll bring him over here and I will be right back. Hi. I'm gonna grab Lazarus here. Come here, buddy. Oh, come here, come here. So this is Lazarus. Lazarus actually had this treatment done to him. He was pretty much dead. He went down the second day of life. He had a good start. Unfortunately, the temperatures got down to, it was like negative 20 something degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and he got very, very uh, hypothermic. And then he went into hypoglycemia, which we said again is that low blood sugar. His respirations were so low that I got a message from my family saying, yeah, we brought him in and he's dead. 
And then I went back in and I checked on him a couple minutes later and I saw that he in fact was breathing. It's just his respirations were down to somewhere around between five and six a minute. We did the same protocol with him. I gave him the intra-abdominal injection that I'm about to show you. And then I placed him directly under a heat lamp on a towel and I let him warm up. I would say within 10 to 15 minutes he was standing um, and then he was able to take a bottle so I did not actually have to tube him. Let's go over here, I'll prep him and I'll kind of show you what I'm doing. So in Lazarus's case here, I can still see a little bit of his umbilical stump. Obviously on a newborn, you're gonna be able to see that a lot better. We, our goal is to go one inch below the umbilicus and about a half an inch over. So we're gonna go right in, right about an inch down and about a half an inch over, which is gonna put us right here. And I am going to use my iodine to prep this entire area. Um, normally the animals are, completely unconscious so this isn't an issue. I would normally have someone help hold. If I don't, I can hold him like this and I can do everything that I need to do. I'm not choking him by the way, I've got a hold of his leg and I'm holding him up that way. But I would go ahead and disinfect this entire area really, really, really well with my iodine. I like to keep my iodine in a bag with a rag, which is good because it rhymes. In all seriousness, I like to keep my iodine in a bag, in a rag, it makes it a little bit easier. I would pull it out and then I would just iodine up this whole area. When I iodine up this whole area, I'm going to take my needle and I, like I said, I'm gonna go one inch down from the umbilicus and a half an inch over. I would inject him at a 45 degree angle down and towards his tail dock. So I'm aiming for his tail. So find my spot, disinfect it, and go at a 45 degree angle to his belly and go down and towards the tail dock. Once I'm in, all the way in, I would go ahead and inject the entirety of this solution and then I am done. You can do either side. So I could go an inch down and a half an inch over on this side or an inch down and a half an inch over on this side. It's a lot easier if you have somebody help you by holding, you just gotta make sure that you get your angle correct. We don't wanna go too shallow and we don't wanna go too deep. A one inch needle is just about right for you. Once you inject this, then you can start warming them up. Again, we don't wanna start warming them up before we give them that dextrose solution. And the reason for that is, is because they have extremely low blood sugar, if you warm them back up, the body systems are gonna to start to pull demand for blood sugar and he's gonna have a fatal seizure more than likely and he's going to die. So that is what you need to do. Welcome back to the office with me. I hope you found that educational and I hope you will utilize this technique in the future. Again, this technique is a game changer. I know it may seem like it is pretty heavy duty, but it is most definitely not anything that you can't do, especially when it's a matter of life and death with your baby. I'm Tim from Lanessa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today, and I look forward to seeing all of you again next time.